the epilogues. Lovers great and wide and all therein, creatures that upon that life begin. To give us food, you open your hand, fill us with good. When you hide your face, we are dismayed. When you take away our breath, we fade. morning. Welcome to worship on this day of Pentecost. We welcome those who are joining us virtually and certainly all who are gathered here in person. Just um, some highlights of the announcements for today. During June and July, we're going to be collecting some things. One is sneakers for love in the name of Christ. There's information in the bulletin for that. And also we're going to be collecting personal care kits that we will assemble for Lutheran World Relief. There's a great need for these kits right now. Those items are listed in your bulletin as well. Uh, just a reminder, our families are meeting this evening at four o'clock at Shank Park for a picnic. The information about that's in your bulletin. And a note to uh, mark your calendars for the VBS dates. They are August 1st through the 4th. There's a planning meeting after church today. If you're interested, it is downstairs. So, um, And just on a final note, I learned this morning that our brothers and sisters at Palm Lutheran are suffering a COVID outbreak, so they are not able to have church today. So let's keep them in our prayers as we continue. I invite you now to uh, turn to confession and forgiveness found in your bulletin. God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The young shall see visions. The elders shall dream dreams. Both men and women shall prophesy. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come, oh, Holy Spirit. spirit. Come and ignite us with the fire of your zeal. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come and create in us a burning desire to serve, teach, prophesy, love, and dream. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come and ignite us with the eagerness of your wonder. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come and create in us an undying will to be Christ to all we meet. Come, Holy Spirit, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy and merciful God, we do not know how to pray as we ought, and we know too well our constant failures to do as you have commanded and to hold fast to your word. Forgive us for the divisions we nurture, Guide us in your way, keep us in your care, and lead us into faith. We trust your word that the spirit of truth will show us all things and grant us courage and peace. Amen. People of God, body of Christ, sisters and brothers, 
the spirit of God's truth has come upon creation and upon you to interpret the mysteries of eternal time. Be at peace with one another because of God's mercy through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior, and by the authority of the church, I declare to you the complete forgiveness of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, the spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people with your love. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elements, Residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Persia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the part of Libya belonged to Cyprus. Visitors from Rome, both Jews, Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our, our own, own languages, languages we, we hear, hear them speaking about, about God's deeds, deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, "What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean?" But others sneered and said, They, they are, are filled, filled with, with new wine. wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then, then everyone, everyone who calls, calls on, on the name, name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Step down. 
We will read Psalm 104 responsibly. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There goes, there go the ships to and fro, and the phaethon which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Second reading, Romans. A re reading from Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit being witnessed. With our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I, have, I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him 
because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Let the meditation of our hearts and minds, the words that are spoken and our hearing of them, be acceptable unto you, O God, our Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is commonly depicted in art as fire. It's certainly a vivid image that tries to capture the essence of what happened on that first Pentecost. The clip art on our bulletin shows a dove descending into the flames of a fire. You heard in the reading we shared from Acts that the Holy Spirit appeared as divided tongues of fire among the disciples on that first Pentecost. As I was thinking about Pentecost and fire this week, I was reminded of a summer long ago in 2006 when some of our senior high youth, they're not senior high youth anymore, but uh, some of them and our advisors traveled to San Antonio for the triennial youth gathering of the ELCA, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. So one of the vivid memories I have of that gathering is the musical performer on the finale night. Her name was Crystal, Crystal Meyer. Her music was not really my favorite kind of style. It was hard rock. The kids were very excited, but in this hard rock, she screamed more than she sang, so we had trouble understanding the lyrics. Even our youth didn't really understand her lyrics, except for one thing that she kept screaming over and over again, I'm on fire. She sang it. She screamed. I can't really do it justice. But it was a really enthusiastic performance, and as we all left, we all started to snicker a little bit about her being on fire, because that's all we heard from the song. Later that night, I searched for the lyrics, and I did find that they did have some good words, and this is what her first verse said. She said, you might light from, you make light from dark, illuminate my heart. It started with a spark, And now I'm consumed. I know that it's your will. So I'm going to shine until I'm a city on a hill and they can see you. And in the chorus, she sang, you set me, you lit me. I'm on fire. What a beautiful sight to see. I'm on fire. Until my light is burning bright, I'm going to lift your name and let the flame get higher. Fire. I thought about calling Alan and asking him to do this song, but... I decided it wasn't his genre either. So, so I can't, I wish you could hear her and her enthusiasm. She really did capture the meaning of having the Holy Spirit living inside of us with her music. It's a fire that God gives us to burn inside of us, to help us negotiate all the things that we encounter in this world, in our world that we uh, have to constantly deal with things that are thrown at us to get get us off track and get us off course that will continue to try to put our flames out. God gives us this gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can be strengthened, so that we're so filled with love that our light shines brightly around us for others who don't realize that this fire of God's love can be true for them as well and bring light to their darkness. Crystal Meyer was excited about God's love living inside her. Her music showed her belief that we can live differently, that our actions and the way we live will shine brighter than all the darkness around and show others to understand and know God's love is alive in our world. Jesus made sure we knew that the Holy Spirit was sent to us so that we could feel his presence deep inside of us, always. God sends the light and this fire of the Spirit 
for us to feel his presence always inside. God sends the light and fire of the Holy Spirit into our lives like that rush of wind that we heard described in the Acts reading, a wind to stir us up, to give us strength, to fill us with power and love so that we're able to proclaim this message of God to the world. And let's face it, our world is in desperate need of a message filled with love, not hate of care and concern for every human life with a focus on what unites us rather than what divides us. I have a fireplace in my living room, and on cold winter days, I love to have a roaring fire burning in that fireplace. And I've learned quickly, though, that fires are sometimes difficult to start, especially if the wood is damp and hasn't cured Sometimes the wood's not dry enough and the sap seeps out and it's really hard for it to grow, to grow into a flame. It just kind of sizzles instead of really burning. Sometimes I don't have the right kindling to get it started. You cannot just put a big log in the fire and throw a little match on it and it'll start. It just doesn't burn. I also must keep adding wood to that fire to keep it going. And if, if I tend it and keep adding the wood, my house gets so warm that we can turn that whole house fan on. And for the entire day, my house is warm everywhere. The fire in my house is powerful, can be powerful, when it gets going. But fire is also something that needs fuel. It's the same with that spark of faith in us, but you know that. That's why you're here today, virtually or in person, to get refueled for the world, to go out into the world today, to get refueled as we worship God and give thanks for the many blessings we are given. This gift of faith and this promise of presence from God as parent, Jesus as our Savior, and the Spirit as our guide, our comforter, our advocate is always there for us. God never takes that gift away, but sometimes we need to tend to that spark of fire inside of us to keep us vibrant and strong and burning. Sometimes it feels that God's spirit is not alive and vibrant in the world, but I think that's not God's fault because far too often I tend to forget that this promise of the gift of the fire of the Holy Spirit that God has graciously given me also charges me with some responsibility. That promise of presence with love and grace offered to fill me up so that I can let the spark inside of me glow brightly rather than simmer. I forget that God desires peace for us all. That peace described in our gospel lesson from John today, he's talking to his disciples on the night before his crucifixion, and he's saying goodbye, and he's telling them that God desires most of all peace for them, a peace that is nothing that the world can give us. Nothing, but also a peace that nothing in the world can change. Nothing. You know, I refer to a pastor by the name of Reverend Jan Richardson who writes a blog, and she writes beautiful blessings. In 2015, she wrote about the fire of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit as she reflected upon the sudden death of her husband after they had recently buried his ashes. And as she introduced the blessing, she wrote this. The fire of Pentecost scalds us toward speech, and this is a blessing and a miracle. This is not, however, where the greatest miracle lies. The miracle of Pentecost is not a miracle of speaking. It is a miracle of hearing and of understanding. How will we allow the Spirit to scorch us, not only toward the word we need to speak, but also toward the word we need to hear? How will we open ourselves to the spirit that comes to set us ablaze with vision? And I close with her blessing that she entitles, What the Fire Gives. You had thought that fire only consumed, only devoured, only took for itself, leaving merely ash and memory of something you had believed, if not permanent, would be long enough, enduring enough, to be nearly eternal. 
So when you felt the scorch on your lips, the searing in your heart, you could not at first believe that flame could be so generous that when it came to you, you in your sackcloth and sorrow, it did not come to consume, to take still more than everything. What surprised you most were not the syllables that spilled from your scalded, astonished mouth, though that was miracle enough to have words burned through what had been numb, to find your tongue aflame with a language you did not know you knew. No, what came as greatest gift was to be so heard in the place of your deepest silence, to be so seen within the blazing, to be met with such completeness by what the fire gives. Amen. Together we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Trusting in God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church and the world and all of creation. Alive in the church to speak your words of forgiveness and salvation in every language and tongue. Pour out your spirit on us as we go out into the world to share your message of grace. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to guide us to care for all the wonders of your good creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where there are those who suffer from injustice, prejudice, conflict, or war. Guide all leaders to promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. We pray especially for those who are suffering in Ukraine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send forth your spirit to aid people in distress in body, mind, or spirit. Sweep them up in the movement of your spirit and fulfill your everlasting promises for all. Today we pray especially for Kay Baker, Jim Baumberger, Dennis Bowerman, Dennis Buchanan, Fran Buchanan, Donna Dixon, David Earhart, Wally Folkrod, Marie Halliday, Carolyn Hess, Glenn Hoffa, Diane Hollebeck, Rosavina Hamasek, Mary Hebner, Jonathan Hunt, Charlene Hurst, Robin Jordan, Marilyn Lehman, Brian Leonard, Diane Lingle, Bill and Laura McEwen, Steve Miller, Donna Pastuck, Margaret Sherrick, Laura Spannenberg, Christina Terhune, Barb Walker, Bob Warden, Alex Wigo, Mike Welty, the people of Palm Lutheran, and all those we either name in our hearts or aloud. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel. Foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners. Especially, we pray for the Hershey Community Food Bank and Outreach, and also for love in the name of Christ. That our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. Console all who mourn. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace from our seats.
Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave her all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Thanks be to God. As the wind sawed through the trees, 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. That, that's, your friends aren't here. The lady isn't here, is she? That's not her. The God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless us now and forever. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Send forth your spirit, O God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever.